The SIS model is a model that describes how an infectious disease can infect susceptible individuals when they come in contact with an infected individual, and how infected individuals recover and become susceptible once again. In the notation of the model, I of t is the fraction of individuals infected at time t, and since individuals are either infected or susceptible, 1 minus i, or 1 minus i of t, is the number of individuals that are susceptible at time t. The model has two parameters, alpha and mu, so that the rate of infection is proportional to i, the number of infected individuals, and proportional to 1 minus i, the number of susceptible individuals, with proportionality constant alpha. Mu is the recovery rate parameter, so that the rate of recovery is equal to mu times the fraction of infected individuals i. The resulting differential equation is di dt equals alpha times i times 1 minus i minus mu i. Let's analyze this dynamical system to see what behavior it predicts. In particular, we're interested in how the behavior depends on the parameters alpha and mu. Let's try to answer a basic question. If we start with a few folks infected, so we start with a positive i, although it might be small, what will happen? Will the disease persist? Will it die out? How will we determine this? When analyzing an autonomous differential equation, or a dynamical system, one of the first things we should do is look for equilibria. So let's try it in this case to see if this helps us answer our question. For a differential equation, equilibria are points where the derivative is zero, because that means the change is zero. Let's denote the equilibria by i star. If i of t equals i star, then di dt should be zero. Plugging this into the differential equation, we determine that alpha times i star times 1 minus i star minus mu times i star must be zero. To solve this equation, we can factor out an i star. So we can see that the solutions are i star equals zero, the first factor could be zero, or the second factor could be zero. Alpha times one minus i star minus mu could be zero. Solving the second equation for i star, we determine that the equilibria are i star equals zero, and the other equilibrium is i star equals 1 minus mu over alpha. After we calculate things like equilibria, we should do a reality check. Does our answer make sense? First of all, how about the zero equilibrium? Does i star equals zero make sense? Well, if we start off with zero infected individuals, it makes sense that an infection shouldn't start out of nowhere because in our model, susceptible people get infected by contact with an infected person. So if the disease isn't present in the population, it will never get an infection. How about the other equilibrium? One minus mu over alpha. First of all, any realistic equilibrium should be between zero and one, since i is supposed to be a fraction of the population. i star is clearly less than one, but is it positive? What is the sign of one minus mu over alpha? Obviously, that depends on the values of mu and alpha. If alpha is less than mu, then mu over alpha is greater than 1, so 1 minus mu over alpha is negative. In this case, the equilibrium i star equals 1 minus mu over alpha doesn't make sense. The only biologically plausible equilibrium is the equilibrium i star equals 0. On the other hand, if alpha is greater than mu, then mu over alpha is less than 1, so that 1 minus mu over alpha is greater than 0. That means that the equilibrium i star equals 1 minus mu over alpha is a reasonably biologically plausible equilibrium. We conclude that if alpha is greater than mu, that is the infection rate parameter is greater than the recovery rate parameter, then we have two reasonable equilibria. We immediately see we're going to get very different behavior depending on the relationship between alpha and mu. Now that we've found the two equilibria of the system, 
and determine the conditions of the parameters under which they are reasonable, the next step is to check the stability of the equilibria. Let's call the right-hand side of the differential equation f of i. It would be hard to use a graphical method to determine the stability of the equilibria, since it's hard to plot f of i with these unknown parameters alpha and mu. So instead, we should use an analytic approach to determine the stability. Let's use our stability theorem. To use this theorem, we need to differentiate the right-hand side, f of i, with respect to i, and look at its sign at the equilibria. To differentiate the first term of f, we need to use the product rule, or we could just multiply it out before we differentiate. I'll use the product rule. The derivative of alpha times i is just alpha, which we need to multiply by 1 minus i, plus alpha times i times the derivative of 1 minus i, which is just negative 1, and then we get a factor negative mu from the derivative of the second term. Multiplying this out in combining terms, we calculate that the derivative is alpha minus 2 alpha i minus mu. Let's look at our two cases to determine the stability of the equilibria under those cases. First case is the case when alpha is less than mu. Then we have only one equilibrium to worry about, which is i star equals 0. Let's check the derivative at i equals 0. The derivative df di at i equals 0 is alpha minus 2 times alpha times 0 minus mu, so it's just alpha minus mu. To determine the stability of the equilibrium, we need to know the sign of this derivative. Given that alpha is less than mu, alpha minus mu is negative. So by the stability theorem, the single equilibrium i equals 0 is stable. Now let's check the second case, the case when alpha is greater than mu, which means we have two equilibria, the equilibrium i star equals 0 and the equilibrium i star equals 1 minus mu over alpha. Let's check 0 first. df di at i equals 0. We've already calculated that it's alpha minus mu. But now that alpha is greater than mu, this derivative is positive. The equilibrium i equals 0 is unstable. In this case, though, we have to check two equilibria. So let's look at the value of the derivative under the condition that i equals 1 minus mu over alpha. This derivative is alpha minus 2 times alpha times i, which is 1 minus mu over alpha, minus mu. If we multiply this out, we get alpha minus 2 alpha plus 2 mu minus mu, which is negative alpha plus mu. For our parameter values, alpha is greater than mu, so negative alpha plus mu is negative. The positive equilibrium is stable. So we get very different behavior, depending on which is larger, the infection rate parameter alpha or the recovery rate parameter mu. If the infection rate is smaller than the recovery rate, this is our case one, then the only equilibrium, i equals zero, is stable. When the infection rate parameter gets larger, the equilibrium at zero becomes unstable, and the positive equilibrium, one minus mu over alpha, becomes stable. Now we're able to answer our question, will the disease persist or will it die out? And the answer to the question is very different depending on the relationship between the parameters alpha, the infection rate parameter, and mu, the recovery rate parameter. If alpha is less than mu, the only plausible equilibrium is i equals zero, and that equilibrium is stable. So if we were to plot the phase line, we could draw the stable equilibrium at zero, and the vector field is always negative or pointing to the left or toward the equilibrium for the realistic part of the phase line where i is non-negative. This means if we start with an infection present, so i starts out being positive, 
i will decrease with time heading towards zero the number of infected individuals will go down and eventually the disease will die out so that after a long time there will be no infected individuals if we plot this versus time we get the positive equilibrium solution at zero which is stable and for any positive initial conditions the solution will decay towards zero in other words our answer to the question is the disease will die out we'll get a very different result for the case when the infection rate parameter alpha is larger than the recovery rate parameter mu in this case if we draw the phase line we can draw an unstable equilibrium at zero and a stable equilibrium at the positive value one minus mu over alpha this means for initial conditions between zero and one minus mu over alpha the vector field will be pointing to the right and the level of infection i will increase with time above the equilibrium one minus mu over alpha the vector field will point to the left and the level of infection will settle down to the equilibrium one minus mu over alpha as time increases if we plot this versus time we can draw the stable equilibrium at the positive value one minus mu over alpha and the unstable equilibrium at zero then for initial conditions that are small but positive the level of infection i of t will grow with time and eventually approach the equilibrium one minus mu over alpha and if for some reason we started with an infection level that was even higher than this equilibrium it would decay toward that equilibrium for these values of the parameters our answer to the question is that the disease will persist the equilibrium one minus mu over alpha corresponds to the level of infection or the fraction of individuals that are infected in this persistent state so if we hope the infection will die out we hope we're in the case where alpha is less than mu or hope that somehow we can change the situation to make alpha less than mu so that we'll be in the happier state where the disease will die out